Hi loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. First of all, she's back. Second of all, okay, if this is not a cute fun topic, so ignore. But you, one of you guys asked me to address the prison riots that are going on in Mississippi. First of all, my heart goes out to all of the inmates, correctional officers, and administration across Mississippi that are suffering through this, as well as family members and loved ones of anybody who has a loved one who is inside a Mississippi facility at this moment because I cannot imagine how heart-wrenching and anxiety-causing and how much paranoia this whole situation must be giving you right now. There was one riot that Adam talks about that happened right before I came back around into his life, so I didn't live through it, but they were on lockdown for three months after that. He said it was petrifying. They didn't know, he honestly didn't know if he was gonna make it through that afternoon. So, for this to be so real for you, my heart is crumbling in my chest because this is the reality of prison wife life. And I know that I'm talking a lot about people who go after this life and stay in it if there are red flags. This is the gory, not glamorous, not fun side to this life. There is nothing glamorous or to glorify about street life, about prison life, and about prison wife life. This is the real deal, you guys. This is the stuff that happens. This is the stuff that keeps us on the outside up at night. So before you go thinking that it's cool and it's badass and it earns you street cred to be involved with somebody who's incarcerated, I want you to know that this could happen in any state. It could happen in a county facility. It could happen in a private prison. It could happen in a federal facility. It could happen in a Marine prison. It could happen anywhere in any prison across the world. This story is still developing. There is not a lot of information out there. I was not about to go on my prison wife pages and probe people for personal information just to make a video. I just felt like that was kind of in bad taste right now while it's going on. So we know as of now when I'm filming this video on Friday night, January 3rd, I hope that's the date, yeah, that five inmates have been killed. This started very end of December. I don't have an exact date where one inmate was killed and I don't know what started it. I don't know what happened, but all I know is gangs are at war right now in Mississippi. All facilities across Mississippi are on lockdown. State prisons, county jails, they are all state. I don't, I don't believe that federal prisons in Mississippi are on lockdown because state and federal are two separate entities. I did a video all about the differences between state prisons and federal prisons and state charges and federal charges and how they're completely two separate entities. And I'll put that above there just to make it easier for you guys if you don't know what I mean when I say that. But state, all state facilities across Mississippi until further notice are completely on lockdown. Unfortunately, inmates are still dying. There have been fires that have been put out, but the smoke from the fires have left it really, really hard to breathe in there. So they say that a lot of this started and is bringing to light the very serious issue with staffing there. Apparently, I don't know the numbers or anything like that. I'm just going off of the few articles that I was able to read. I would have read as many as I could get my hands on. There just aren't that many out there right now. Not tons of people have reported on this yet. So what this one article said was that the buildings have about 200 inmates per building, per unit. And there is, brace yourself, one correctional officer per 200 inmates. So it's very easy for this stuff to kind of pop off. Also, in one of the articles I read, it said a lot of the institutions there are run down. There aren't the correctional officers there to keep things under control, to keep un people under watch. So it's very easy for inmates to get their hands on things that they can make knives out of, that things that they could sharpen. There's old metal on the walls. There's things that are just unsafe to be laying around or loose or you guys know how it is on the inside. I don't need to tell you. This took place in Sunflower County and the coroner, whose name is Heather Burton, said that there were three inmate deaths in three days. We now know that that has increased to five and we don't know if that's gonna continue to increase, but three 
death in three days and she said that has been unprecedented that was unheard of it had never happened in all the years that she's been the coroner for that county she said things are surreal at this point and every time the phone rings she's like not another one and it's another one. They also said that families have been calling worried sick and they are submitting cell phone footage, which I couldn't get my hands on. If any one of you guys have seen it, can link me to it, can send it to me at Strong Prison Wives on social media everywhere and row at strongprisonwivesandfamilies.com. Send it to me. I will be happy to make a follow-up video because you guys need to know what's going on. But they said that as of today, there was a news story that came out that I'll link in here. But they said that families are calling to speak to the warden and they're being told to call back tomorrow. They don't have answers. They don't know how long this is going to last. And it's just crazy that more and more deaths keep happening. So what I want to do to help you guys and to also to show you how serious this is, I want to read a little bit about each of the inmates that lost their lives during this riot because I think that first of all let's pay them some respects and second of all you guys could see how unglamorous this is. A lot of these people weren't involved in gang activity they just got caught in the crossfire and that's something that happens very commonly on the street when you're involved in that kind of life and then inside it doesn't just stop when they go inside. So it's so sad. So here are the facts that we know so far. Five inmates have been killed at three Mississippi DOC facilities because gangs are at war. Terrence Dobbins, who was 40 years old, was the first inmate that was killed in Leakesville at the South Mississippi Correctional Institution. Two other inmates were injured there, but both of them were sent to the hospital and neither of them have passed away as far as I'm aware. Walter Gates was a 25-year-old man who was killed at a riot in Parchman that happened on Tuesday. Several other inmates were injured there as well. On Thursday at Parchman, another inmate who, as of this article's coming out, was unidentified. Gregory Emery was 26 years old and he was killed at Chickasaw County Regional Correctional Facility on Thursday. Two other inmates were also injured. Generous Howell was 36 years old and he was killed at Parchman on Friday. More state prisoners were injured in Chickasaw at fights that erupted after this throughout the week. Basically, this article says that because of the shortage of staff, gangs are running the Mississippi facilities, especially in the private prisons. Their presence is crazy there right now. The private prisons, however, are denying that the gangs are in charge. Uh, is this not proof? So Terrence Dobbins was the first inmate that was killed. He was 40 years old and he died at SMCI in Leakesville on December 29th. Mississippi DOC shut down all facilities, locked down all facilities, and cited the reason as a major disturbance that led to this inmate's death, which we are putting the pieces together. The major disturbance were these awful riots. He was serving a life sentence for a homicide in one county and then eight years for an aggravated assault in another county. He had told his sister, who reported to the facility that he felt unsafe there and she had tried to get him moved countless times. He tried to move, get moved countless times before his death. He had dreams of getting out of prison and opening up a barber shop and a salon. He also dedicated a lot of his time to helping other inmates reform their lives, prepare for release, and he prided himself on being able to mentor the youth and helping them get out and stay out of prison, which touches my heart so much because that's exactly what Adam does and what he's like. When his sister used to visit him with her kids, with his nieces and nephews, he used to kind of lecture them all the time age appropriately and say, you don't want to get in trouble. You don't want to be here. You don't want to go to jail. It is not fun here. And he just used his time to rehabilitate himself. Sadly, his sister had called up there and they wouldn't tell her anything about his death. She's just left completely in the dark, which is really common when dealing with the DOC. Walter Burton was the second inmate that was killed at Parchman, literally within an hour of the new year. The coroner said she got a call at 12.45 in the morning and was told that this inmate had been killed. And when she got there, Unit 29E was still unsecured from this riot that had erupted 
I don't understand how this riot was still going on after midnight. Officers had assessed the situation and they had removed other inmates from the vicinity of this inmate that had been killed. The cause of death was multiple stab wounds and the time of death was 12.22 a.m. He had been sentenced to 10 years in prison in 2015. The next inmate that was killed was Gregory Emery, who was 26 years old and he was at Chickasaw facility. He was killed the morning of January 2nd. He was serving a 16 year sentence for a burglary of a uninhabited, a dwelling that had no people, nothing there. What's the word? Unoccupied, of an unoccupied dwelling. His ex-wife said that he was an electrician and he was the father of two boys. She said he was a very kind soul and he had an amazing sense of humor. He could get along with anybody and tons and tons of people genuinely loved him. This is so sad because it actually puts personalities behind numbers and statistics and these are people that just lost their lives. No matter if they're in prison or not, Oh, it's so heartbreaking. She said he was one of those people that would do anything for anybody. If he was driving down the street and he saw somebody pulled over, he would pull over, get out of the car and help them. She said when she heard that prison statewide went on lockdown, she figured that he'd be locked in his cell and he would be kept safe. She said he should have been protected and they failed to do that. She said he wasn't in any gangs. She said when they riot, there is nothing you can do. You can't go run anywhere and hide. There's nowhere for you to go. And unfortunately, he was just caught in the middle. He was planning to get out of prison and return home later this year. His former employer had promised to give him his job back and he was so looking forward to spending time with his children who are five and six years old. <sighs> After leaving prison, he also had aspirations to help people who were either had been to prison or were involved in drug court. He really wanted to make a difference and help prove to people and show that you can turn your life around. You can be rehabilitated. These people are fathers, brothers, sons, husbands, she said. Something needs to change in the system so that families don't have their loved ones end up as victims of collateral damage of what's going on. On January 2nd, another inmate was confirmed dead. He's been unidentified still. The name has not been released least pending identification of next of kin. Oh, so earlier that day, the warden had sent a call, an emergency call for help. A fire had broken out in unit 30 at that prison. They said that there were no injuries and no deaths due to that fire. The coroner wasn't called about anything related to the fire. In fact, she wasn't called about that first inmate that was killed early in the morning that's still unidentified until 1147 when the hospital confirmed that he had passed away from stab wounds. And that was related to a riot in Unit 29D. Denaris Howell is 36 years old and he was killed at Parchman on January 3rd. The coroner says that she received the call at 3.20 in the morning. Apparently an altercation broke out between Parchman and his roommate his cellmate, they were locked in the cells together, the facility was on lockdown, and they both had knives, they both wound up stabbing each other, and this man died of stab wounds. According to the facility, this had nothing to do with the riots, the grand disturbances, what do they call them? Major disturbances, we know that's what they're, that they're riots. This had nothing to do with that, it was just my opinion, everybody's on heightened alert, everybody's angry, they're locked down, they're anxious, they're paranoid, they're full of testosterone. So everybody's on edge, everybody's heated, everybody's mad, and they got in a spat, and things are violent, and that's what happened. So according to them, this isn't gang related. So that is all of the information that I could find, that I have, that I could pass along to you guys. All of the articles I'm reading, all of the video clips that I saw, which were very few, say that the stories will be updated as more information comes out. Let's just hope and pray now that all the facilities are on lockdown, everything just stops. But if you guys have any information, please, please, please send it out to me. If your loved one is in a Mississippi facility, I would love to hear from you. If you want to be interviewed on this channel, that works for me. I just want to share this information and get it out there for different reasons. One, because families need to stay informed because it is excruciating during lockdowns, period, but especially during lockdowns, during riots when people keep dying. Oh, and second of all, because this needs to stop. 
we need to put a voice to this. We need to figure out how to fix this. We need to figure out how we can make it work better, how we can have corrections and inmates get along enough to respect each other, to not kill each other anymore. Oh, it's so heartbreaking and it's just so senseless. It doesn't have to happen. I don't want to keep talking and reiterating all of it, but again, if you have information, reach out to me. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Usually it's fun, but also you need this information. If you like this video and the content I put out, even if it's not positive content and it triggers an emotional response, please give the video a thumbs up. Even though it's sad content, please don't give the video a thumbs down if you like my content because it doesn't work like that. It's not like an emoji. I know, it's crazy. But I know a lot of people, I say it on my friends channels when people give thumbs down because it's emotionally triggering content. That's not what the thumbs down means. If you don't like me, okay. But that's it, you guys. Keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Please don't glorify street life. There is nothing glamorous about it. There is nothing glamorous about waiting on the outside and not knowing if your loved one, real talk you guys, will ever be returned home to you. <sighs> Lots of love from my heart to yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen.